Welcome back to this World of Warcraft Let's Play. Yo, Sambo, and joining us as always is Seraphis, our level 31 Worgen Mage. Say good day, Seraphis. Fate has brought you here to me. Fate has indeed brought us here to Felfire Hill. Of course, if you joined us in the last episode, you'll know that we were questing up in the Warsong Lumber Camp up to the north there, and we've come down to the south here if we have a look on our map. Here we go, we're down here just at the entrance to Demonfall Canyon and we've got a couple of quests that we want to knock out here. One of them is called Never Again and you can see that we have to take out a named demon here. You will find Gorgonon in Demonfall Canyon south beyond Felfire Hill near Manoroth's Floating Broken Spear. And you see the objectives that we have to do are to get the Flaming Blade and the Seeker's Fell Spear. And of course we've got another one over here, Closure is Only Natural, we've got to close off 10 of these demon gates and of course we want to do that to try and stop the burning legion spreading excuse me spreading their nasty ways here in the forest of course with the night elves trying to preserve the forest in its natural state and of course these demons trying to do their best to corrupt things and of course if we have a look around here you'll see that there are a number of different demon types around there we go a searing infernal and over here we've got ourselves some fell guards and of course as we mentioned in a previous episode if you're a warlock you'll see a lot of this will be familiar because of course you can actually summon a great number of these as your minions and of course the warlocks being demonic folk that they are that's why so let's jump right into it folks start off by uh, taking out some of these mobs that are wandering around the entrance to the canyon here because of course we want to clear the entrance so we can actually get in there without being interrupted and again these should be pretty easy pickings because they're very low we are a very high level for this area you can see here that they're about level 21 and we're level 31 so we're 10 levels above so we're way outside of our XP comfort zone so to speak but that's okay we're not here for maximum XP we're here for the storyline and for the fun and they definitely you definitely know when they've been uh, taken down as they fall apart and make a heck of a racket all right so here we go heading on into Demon's Fall Canyon you can see it's come up there and as soon as we're in range there we go we're going to take down these guys and then we're going to figure out exactly where it is that we need to go all right now these demon gates that we have to close i'm not sure to be honest exactly what they look like but i guess we'll find them soon enough but i am going to be on the lookout for this other guy the named guy gorgonon and i'm guessing that he's up to the side here so i think we'll take a little jaunt perhaps no not up this side eh, no okay that's a dead end i'm pretty sure there is a path leading up to the side somewhere around here could be could be up there who knows let's clear out the path anyway oh and i can see a mining node up ahead as well we definitely want that And of course I can use my counter spell, you heard it pop off there, you saw the actual visual effect on the mob and of course you know what that does, that actually interrupts their casting. Now because we haven't specced into it, it doesn't actually um, silence them for any period after that, all it does is actually interrupt that particular spell that they are casting, so that's something important to bear in mind later on when we're doing raids and five man instances that are a lot tougher than the ones we're doing now, we will absolutely spec into that one because silence is your friend, trust me. And there we go, made short work of that roaming fell guard. Now I'm pretty sure these aren't the demon gates, but you know what, they might be. So let's just try this here, Narl's bow. And of course you can see here, use, target a demon gate to channel the power of Ashen Veil into it. And if you concentrate the power for five seconds, the demon gate will be destroyed. So perhaps, I don't know, perhaps this is actually what we need. Let's try. Oh, and look at that, it is. Okay, so it's a ground effect, the bow. And there it is, boom, Demon Goat Gate closed, 1 out of 10. Alright, so now that I know that, let's mount up and head back out to this one and actually, actually close it. Whoops. I was actually looking for something that we could actually target. Uh, but of course, this bow is a ground effect just like that, so there we go. Great stuff, 2 out of 10. Neat little effects going on there as well. 
And let's drop to all fours and use our running wild ability here. And you can see we've entered into this canyon. Let's just hop up here. Pretty sure this is where we're going to have to go to get to this named mob. So we'll soon find out. And of course, there's nothing wrong with a bit of exploration anyway. And the frame rate's taken a bit of a hit there for some reason. Down to 15 frames per second. Not sure if that's just Vista having a tanty or what's going on. Perhaps it'll clear. I don't know. We'll keep filming in the meantime. I'm sure you guys are well used to weird frame rate anomalies when you're watching my videos. Yes, I know, I have to upgrade to Windows 7, and we will. We will when I have time. Alright, this is pretty poopy. I think what we'll do is we'll pause and see if we can do something and come back and hopefully get our frame rate back. You never know with Vista. Alright, we'll be right back. And there we go folks, we're back and you can see just stopping and starting recording for some reason means I'm back to 60 frames per second. Go Vista! You make all the sense in the world to me, not. Seriously is a terrible operating system. In fact I was talking about this with Tallahassee and McLarge Huge the other day at brunch and we were just thinking to ourselves, how? Like, in what universe could you possibly release an operating system that allows you to have 6 gigabytes of RAM in your machine? and yet only recognizes three of them. I mean, I'd, I'd, you know, I'd love to have been sitting around the table when that design decision was made and somebody went, yep, that's okay. We are okay with that. Seriously, come on, Microsoft. I don't know, what with all of the problems I have in Vista and gosh, don't let me get started on the problems I've been having recently trying to buy a tablet that does flash and of course that means I can't buy anything made by Apple. So I've been having to investigate and play around with a whole bunch of non-Apple tablets, mainly Asus, Toshiba, uh, Motorola, no Samsung ones, I must admit. But you know what, all it's done is, and by the way, I've had to end up buying an Asus Transformer. I've already had to return one because it was faulty, and I got the new one home today, uh, and it had a nice great big dirty scratch on the screen underneath the glass. And you know what, I've spent so much time and you know these days time is money I've wasted so much money trying to just find something and being mucked about I give up you know I'm just gonna actually keep this one with its great big scratch because I can't be bothered anymore but what it's taught me folks like it or lump it is that at the end of the day you can't beat the quality of Apple I don't care if you funnel down a path I don't care if you can't do 20 different things with your applications and you can't make one green and one pink and all these options you know what at the end of the day they do what they say they going to do and their build quality is right up there it's possibly the best build quality I've ever come across in my life and you're never going to convince me otherwise same with Sony in a lot of cases and too in terms of things like the PlayStation I mean you know I own an Xbox I've replaced my Xbox twice because of faults I've never had anything go wrong with my PlayStation same thing I think end of the day it just boils down to you get what you pay for huh anyway there you go there's my moans about operating systems for the day we'll get that out of the way and now of course we can see up in the background here this is what we came for Gorgonon who of course looks like a classic burning crusade creature actually these are the sort of creatures that you'll find out in the outlands in hellfire peninsula especially some kind of big fell demon lord and of course it's great for me because it brings back fantastic memories of the Burning Crusade which I'm a huge fan of in case you hadn't realized alright let's see how many of these gates we've closed this will be our seventh gate so we'll have three more after this let's just pick off the mob to the side there in fact we'll close the gate first I think we've got a bit of range on it yes we have so we don't have to be right up close that's always good Let's see if, if we've got the range we have with our frost bolt to be able to pick off this succubus over here. And they've called it a Manorock Glacier. Oh, and it pulls. Okay, so it's a pet actually of the main demon here, the Gorgonon. Let's get out of the way. Slow him down. Oh, and he knocked us down. Oh dear. Alright, what I really need now is my Frost Nova, but I don't have it up. It's off cooldown. It's not off cooldown yet. 
And he keeps interrupting me. I keep going to cast spells. And I'm stunned. You can see there, that was basically the effect of a silence that I was talking about before. And there we go. There it is. Garganon's Flaming Blade. It is all ours. And you can see that the quest is updated over here where we need the Seeker's Fell Spear. And that is down the other end of the canyon. So let's get ourselves out of here. Mount up perhaps. Very cool area. Like I said, definitely reminds me of the Burning Crusade content without doubt. Which is no bad thing. Alright, so let's check out the old map. Looks like we're going to continue to close gates. We've got two more of those. Eight out of ten is what we're up to. And if we keep heading basically to the southwest, we'll come across the Seeker's Fell Spear. I don't know if that drops off a Seeker or whether or not it's just a spear that's hanging around. I guess we'll soon find out. And good old clear casting there. And of course, the poor old Searing Infernal, absolutely no match for us. You can see we're not even taking any damage, of course, uh, because we are effectively 10 levels higher than the content around here. 31 we are. 31 and a half now. Oh, now actually, before I forget, let's have a look in our Dungeon Finder just to make sure that we're still keeping things uh, kosher. And we'll go to our specific Dungeons menu here. And let's have a look. So Nomragon, you can see there, that has turned green. We've got to level 34, so we've got plenty of time to get there. And you can see that the uh, levels that we can, or the, rather the dungeons that we can run at level are Scarlet Monastery Graveyard and also the Scarlet Monastery Library Wing. And of course, if you are familiar with good old WoW, you know that they are, and again, a couple of classic runs and a great opportunity, if you're a melee class especially, to get a whole bunch of great armor and some great tanking gear out of there. That's all still there, I assume, although I must admit I haven't been into the Scarlet Monastery since the Cataclysm. I'm, I'm hoping that they've kept all the classic stuff there and the classic mobs and that they've just changed things up a little bit because uh, it would be a real shame if we lost some of the bosses out of there but uh, we'll be running them much later on there we go nine out of ten gates closed We've got one more over here oh what's that over there oh that's interesting there's some kind of thing on the ground we'll pop over and have a look in a minute but of course in the meantime we'll be running Nomragon now Nomragon if uh, you're not sure what that's about that is a gnome instance and of course it's the old it's the old city of the gnomes, and one of the things that happened before the cataclysm came out was, oops, was that the you were able to actually partake if you uh, were on the alliance. That is, and let's just check this out. Okay, not sure what that is. Maybe it's a quest item later on. You were able to partake in an event, a server event that allowed you to actually try and retake Nomragon. Now it'll be interesting. I haven't run the instance since then, so it'll be interesting to see if the instance has actually changed. I'm assuming. Uh, that the quests will definitely have changed because of those events I was just talking about. Uh, but, you know, a lot of folk back in the day uh, never used to like Gnomeragon because it was so confusing to get around very, very large instance indeed. And if you didn't know where you were going or if you were a new player to Gnomeragon, it was very, very easy to get lost and frustrated. Now, I'm going to assume now that there is a map for it, just like all of the other instances nowadays. Um, that clearly mark out where all the mobs are and where the bosses are. So let's hope that that's the case. All right, now, where are we headed? Because it seems like we've come to a dead end, and we basically need to get up there somehow. So perhaps perhaps it was that path that we saw that little monument on. Maybe that was a marker, actually, at the end of the day. Who knows? And look at this place. Again, very bland and stark environment around here, but I just love the lighting and the effects Seriously, uh, I know that, there we go, Demon Fall Ridge. I know that, wow, graphics aren't everybody's cup of tea, but, you know, they still manage to convey the fantastic atmosphere uh, across all the different zones. And I absolutely love it in terms of wandering around and going adventuring. Definitely right up there for me. Now that's another question, my question of the day to you guys. Uh, and of course we're trying to do one of these questions in each one of my videos now. Try and mix it up a little bit, keep things a bit interesting. Um, I want to know how many of you guys, firstly, this is a multi-part question as we take down this Searing Infernal. Multi-part question is firstly, do you play WoW? Even though you watch the Let's Play series, doesn't necessarily mean of course that you do play WoW, and that's okay, you don't have to. To enjoy the series, now let's just make sure we're heading in the right direction, and we are, okay, just as well we popped up here. 
do you play it well and there and basically following on from that if you do play well or if you have played well you don't have to um, play it at the moment when did you start playing so was it back <clears throat> excuse me in the vanilla days or did you come on board for example at the launch of the burning crusade uh, maybe you came on board in Wrath of the Lich King or even now in Cataclysm. Who knows? Let us know. <clears throat> and the second or third part rather of the question, <clears throat> if I can clear the throg of my, frog in my throat. <clears> throat. Let's have a cup of tea. That's what it's here for. <clears throat> ah, there we go. Good old Melbourne tea. Thanks Reggie for putting me onto that. The third part of my question, now I've got my voice back, is... Um, did you ever play Warcraft? And by that I don't, of course, mean uh, Warcraft, World of Warcraft. I mean Warcraft, the actual game. So it could have been perhaps uh, Warcraft 1, uh, Warcraft 2, or Warcraft 3. I'm assuming most people would have uh, played Warcraft 3. And of course that's where this whole visual style comes from. And that's, that's what led me on to this particular question for this episode. If you go back and have a look at Warcraft 3, You'll see that part of the reason that World of Warcraft looks like this is that they're trying to keep uh, to their roots in terms of the visual style of Warcraft 3. Now we're looking for the spear somewhere over here. What are we looking for? Maybe we need to... Now let's have a look at the actual quest. Never again. Alright, that's been tracked, is it? Okay, it is. Let's actually read that. Um, you'll find Gorgonon and Demon Fall. That's who we've ever got. Uh, who, who we've all always got already, I mean. Uh, and Diatheris the Seeker resides somewhere in the Barrow Den atop Demon Fall Ridge. Oh, okay, so he's in some kind of Barrow Den. Oh, actually, you know what? That looks like that might be a Barrow, is it? No, it's not an entrance. I thought that might have been a Barrow up there. Let's have a look for the entrance. Could be that building, actually, come to think of it. We are taking down the succubus as the awesome demonic music plays in the background there. Love the World of Warcraft soundtrack. And of course the other thing I loved, and this also harks back to the uh, Warcraft 3 days, uh, are the cinematics. And of course uh, Blizzard are just absolute masters when it comes to cinematics. They're absolutely brilliant. Oh, here we go. Okay, this is absolutely a Barrow Den. Now this may be familiar to you as well. You've probably uh, come across these ones in places like... Uh, oh, what's the oh, Felwood? Actually, there's a number of them in there, and they all basically have the same layout. And again, speaking of confusing, a lot of people get confused in these dens because they split off and branch out. Uh, once we get out of this tunnel, you'll see uh, that they go in all sorts of crazy directions, and it's very, very easy to get lost and go round and round in circles. So it'll be interesting to see whereabouts the boss that we're after, or rather the named mob that we're after, is. Could be deep down at the very end. Or he could be up in one of these platforms that are coming up here. So already you can see there's a couple of different ways to go. And you can yeah, see it goes down off down into the darkness over there straight ahead of us. But it also splits off around and underneath us down here. So it's very, very easy to get lost. Alright, what do we got in here? A searing infernal. You know what? We'd better go in there and check out because it is a room. It'd be horribly annoying if we ran around the entirety of the Barrow Den and then realized that, in fact, the spear was in here or something. That would be nasty. But we are looking for a mob that's called a Seeker. So, I'm presuming it's going to drop off that. Oh, yes, these dens, this layout absolutely brings all sorts of memories back. And there he is, and I'd say that's his pet. So, what we'll probably do at this time is lock him down. And then we'll target up using tab key, of course. We'll target up the seeker there, slow him down, and then we'll spam all of our arcane abilities, which of course bring out the best in our DPS suite. And you can see we made short, swift, sharp work of them very, very easily. So it looks like we don't have to go down into the den. Oh, there we go, there's someone else. Aggroed on us. So locking them down with good old Frost Nova, locking them in place, which also, by the way, also does damage, just in case you were wondering. Has a little dot effect on it, damage over time. All right, so that's great. Let's use our Dark Flight ability here, which is, of course, like a rogue sprint. We keep forgetting that that's actually there. 
And let's also not forget if we get into trouble that we have this ice block ability which was a recent addition to our repertoire. That's going to come in really handy if we are fighting higher level stuff, higher level content or indeed if we're doing a dungeon run and for some reason for example the tank dies and all the mobs decide to gang up on us. We can use that ice block to kind of, ice block rather, ice blog, ice block to get out of trouble and for about 10 seconds I think it lasts, it basically makes us impervious to any sort of damage but of course the drawback being that we can't move look at that look at all this corruption the trees there that's so cool that's what i love about this look at that the tree with its over stylized um sort of terra face on it you can see the ooze dripping out of its mouth there see the little boiling bubbles in the water here that has been totally corrupted as we make ripples in it of course that's all part of the new water that came about in the new graphics engine absolutely love it no it's not the prettiest no it's not the most technically accomplished uh, but it's definitely one of the most cool in terms of its stylization. I absolutely love it. So once again, folks, just reminding you of our question for this week. Do you play WoW or did you in the past and have you stopped? Uh, secondly, uh, from whence did you start playing WoW? Was it Vanilla WoW? Are you a veteran? Or was it Burning Crusade, Wrath of the Lich King or even Cataclysm? And the third part of the question, did you play Warcraft, specifically Warcraft 3, the good old real-time strategy game, which is still lots of fun to play even to this day. There you go. So let me know in the comments below. Meanwhile, we have to get ourselves out of the Demonfall Canyon. Let's take out a couple of mobs along the way. And I can see that a mining node has respawned up ahead of us. Jolly good. Now, I was playing with another friend of mine the other day, and they are on the trial account, and they've just managed to hit level 20. Uh, by the way, congratulations to you. You know who you are if you're listening. And seeing those succubus there, or succubi, I think is the plural name for them, just reminded me they just hit level 20, which of course means they can't level anymore on their starter edition account. But they are a warlock, and just reminded me that um, I think... The level that you get certain pets or minions as a warlock has certainly changed up a little bit. Level 20 now is when you get their, uh, the succubus if you are a warlock, just in case you were. Uh, rather, yeah, that's right. If you're a warlock, you get your summon, yeah, succubus at level 20, just in case you were wondering. I do believe you still get your blueberry, i.e. the void walker, at level 10. Uh, but what has changed, I'm pretty sure that when you roll a warlock now, you actually get your imp, your little imp minion that uh, blasts out the fireballs. I'm pretty sure you get him right from the start. Pretty much like hunters too. By the way, if you haven't played a hunter for a while, you may be pleasantly or un un unpleasantly surprised to know that when you actually roll your character, you, you have your pet straight away, and it all depends uh, upon the race that you have because for example night elves I think get a oh you know what? I can't remember I think they might get a little moonstalker or something like that I think a Drenai gets something like a pet flying uh, I'm not sure what some kind of flying thing pretty sure if you're a horde orc you get something like a a pig um, so you don't have to actually go out and train your first pet anymore but to be honest you know I'm kind of sad about that because I did enjoy that whole experience you got to sort of about a level 10 I think it was and you know you're just getting used to your hunter and then it sort of dawned upon you you got presented this quest to go out and learn how to train and tame pets from the wild and it was actually quite a cool little um, hop step and jump after having leveled for 10 levels nice little surprise if you didn't know about it but unfortunately now all that is gone and you actually just get it up front after you've rolled your tune. So I'm not, not too happy about that personally, but oh well, never mind. Okay, never again. Our Night Elf scout Scouts report that preparations for the attack are almost complete. Those Dreadlords must die soon, Seraphis. And here we go. We've got both of those items that are required. And never again will the Burning Legion threaten Ashenvale. You've delivered us from a fight we very likely would have lost, Mage. I give you thanks, Seraphis, and the deepest gratitude of the Hand of Argus. And by the way, that's the faction, of course, that that particular Drenai guy is belonging to. It honors me to have you at our side. Right, now we've got a few rings here. So let's see, for a start, we don't want strength and stamina. We also don't want agility and stamina. What we probably want is stamina and intellect. Let's have a look and see what our other ones have got. Oh yeah, look at that. So the gloaming band there will actually, if we replace it with this Seal of Argus, 
and of course that's a reference to the hand of Argus faction there that will actually give us one more intellect and one more stamina which doesn't sound much but at our level that's quite handy thank you very much so let's hop into our outfit and again we can go where are we we can drop these out we can like expand these little things here and it makes it much easier we don't actually have to hunt through our bags it just automatically places the items that are in our bags in this handy little handy dandy menu here if we can equip it in this slot so it's great now if i hover over the seal of argos there then we can get a tooltip and we hold down shift to bring up the comparison and you can see there that it actually will the, if we replace the gloaming band then it will give us those plus one stats so all we have to do is click on it like that and it's saved it's that easy and it will automatically put the other ring there in our bags now if I go to the fishing outfit let's equip that there we go and we'll look for the gloaming band again and I'd say that it's yep that one so we'll swap that out very simple never have to um, rummage through your bags it's great stuff go back to normal and equip that and just make sure that we've got the right rings on yes we do nice and easy there we go all right now it's time to hand into Nal. Now that we've done his bidding, and of course we've closed all of those demon gates. There we go, with the gates closed and no further reinforcements coming, it's only a matter of time now before the demons are no more. You are a heroine of the forest, Seraphis. That's right, I am. I give you a thanks on behalf of all of Ashenvale's creatures, and we're going to receive a little bit of XP and some silver. Not too much, of course, again, because we are kind of out of the level range of the ideal level range for these quests. Alright, new quest has popped up from the Ancient here, the Shade Walker. Now that the demon gates have been destroyed, the power of the forest must be replenished. The forest heart must be retrieved. So, Gyvan Shade Walker, a powerful druid of the Claw, has gone southwest past Fellfire Hill to the Dor Danil Barrow Den. And of course, I think that's where we were before. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure it was. Oh, excuse me. Therein lies the forest heart. It's protected by the druids of Ashenvale deep below the ground. Seek out Gavin and tell him of what has transpired, Seraphis. Speak with Gavin Shadewalker, uh, pacing outside the entrance to the Dordanel Barrow Den in Ashenvale. So let's have a look at this and see if we can figure out where it is. We'll go to our map and it is where? What's it called? In the... Where is it? This one here, the Shadewalker. Oh! Okay, so I don't think it is actually where we were, because of course we were down here in Demon Fall Canyon. This is where we need to go, the Door Daniel Barrow Den. I think what we'll do is we'll head there. We've got a couple of minutes left in the episode. Looks like we're sort of done in this area. So thanks to these guys here for helping us out. And of course, it was lots of fun questing around in the Warsong Gulch. Time to move on to new pastures. Let's head on over down to the southwest. And we'll go see Gavin Shadewalker, see what he's got to say. Just before we wrap up the episode, probably a good place to finish off. And there it is, the classic, the extremely classic, the classic vanilla WoW Night Elf soundtrack in the background there. Isn't it just fantastic? Absolutely love it. Seriously, how big and open world feeling is this game, especially especially with areas like this and of course there are a number of very large zones in the game it's not just Ashenvale some of them are absolutely huge mungus and that was the case of course when we start talking about the barons and I think that's why they split it in two for the cataclysm because it was just too large for a lot of people who are again time poor uh, having to run from one end of the barons to the other took a significant amount of time here we go the Dordanelle Barrow Den this is us and you can see an Ashenvale outrunner there, stealth. You can just see their outline. Oh, and it looks like we've got some oozes here. What's this? A rotting slime. And of course, you have come across that model before in a previous episode. We pointed them out. It's oh, bless me. Looks like I might have to get rid of a couple of these mobs. We'll do so as our frame rate goes to poop. Again, thank you, Vista. There we go. All right, just uh, I paused there briefly for a moment just to get the frame rate back, and it did. And look at this. This ooze here, this rotting slime, has actually dropped a rusty chest, which is interesting. And inside it is some silk and copper. Hey, there we go. Must have swallowed them somewhere along the way. Now, what's this? Severed druid. Oh, okay. So it looks like we've got some uh, druids around here that are not friendly. They've obviously been severed off from all things good. 
So what we're going to try and do is, whoa, okay, where is this guy? The Shadewalker. All right, looks like he's further ahead. Oh, this is a bit dangerous, this area, and of course it would be very, very dangerous if we were at level. Fortunately, we're not, so these guys aren't really going to aggro on us too badly. So we can probably just navigate our way. Let's see what level these are. Here we go. The Severed Druids are level 21. So that's why they're not bothering us so much. Oh, and there is a mining node. And look, folks, see, I mean, we've gone in a completely different direction. And still, still, the beautiful forest. And by the way, look at that shade of purple for those trees. Just fantastic, isn't it? I absolutely love it. You can see the forest still drifts off there way into the background, way out of visual range. And you can see we're actually still only looking at a very, very small portion of it. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy, isn't it? It's just, you know, imagine if you're able to look from down here in the bottom right-hand corner all the way across the entire zone. I mean, it would just be so huge. It's not funny. Anyway, we are looking for this guy. Where is he? There he goes. He's, oh, it's not, okay, so, well, it could be a guy. It's a druid, meaning he's currently in cat form. There you go. So that's what cat form looks like if you're a druid. And of course, you may recognize the fact that they have changed the cat form as well. If we zoom right in, quickly have a good old look around. Maybe we'll say goodbye for a second and get rid of the highlighting. You can see that they've actually changed the model. They've updated it. If you haven't played WoW for a while, you notice that the cat form is very schmick now. Very nice. Here we go, Shade Walker. What's he got to say? You are brave to come here, mage, uh, but you may be too late. All of the druids are either dead or have been driven insane. And I'd say that's what these severed druids are that are wandering around the place. Still, your tale is intriguing. And if what you say is true, then Nal must have no, uh, the forest heart and soon. Or Ashenvale will begin to wither. Here we go. Let's see what he's got for us. Couple of quests, insane druids. I won't bother reading all of that out for you, seeing as we're at the end of the episode. But long story short, we have to slay the insane druids, Tanil Darkwood, Uthal Mooncall, and Mavorus Cloudbreak. These guys, I guess, are yeah. You can see there they were once great, great leaders, and it looks like we're going to be taking them down because they've been corrupted. So I'm sure the quest will uh, tracker rather will update on the map as we find those people that we need and. What else have we got here? One more, the Forest Heart. You must get the Forest Heart to Nal at all costs. Down at the bottom of the Dordanel Danil Barrow Den, it sits corrupted by the Horde. Only Nal can cleanse it. So there you go. Uh, we were talking about going deep into the den earlier. Looks like this quest is going to send us deep inside it. In order to move it, though, you'll need a power of nature. If you collect enough untainted spirits from the severed druids and keepers, the spirits can be combined into a power of nature. Good luck, Seraphis. All right, so it looks like we have to create some sort of regent or device in order to be able to actually contain and obtain the forest heart. There we go. All right, so let's accept that. And that's probably, like I say, a great place to log out as any. And no doubt we'll have to head inside there. But let's log off with the beautiful vista of Aha uh -huh, Vista of Ashenvale Forest in the background. Folks, I certainly hope you enjoyed that episode. More importantly, of course, I certainly hope you'll join us in the next one. And I hope you're having a great day wherever you may be. In the meantime, it's myself, Sambo. It's Seraphis, our wonderful level 31 Wargan Mage, saying take care, have a great day. We'll see you soon, and bye-bye.